The trick is to keep the lid on. Now, let it cook for one minute. You like cooking, don't you? Good for you. This is my sunny side up fortune telling. Um, when it turns out good, it means something good is gonna happen. Oh. So that's why you don't cook them over easy. But the secret to good cooking is to keep who's going to eat it in mind. Is this your mother? Yes. She's really beautiful. <laughs> that tune you were humming. It's from the periodic table, isn't it? Thorium, protactinium, uranium, neptunium, plutonium, americium, americium, ah, uh, curium. curium, 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 that's it, curium. <laughs> <laughs> Olga. Hmm? My mother. Oh. I see. Oh. It's going to burn. Oh, hold on. Hold on. did a great job. is in Eastern Europe. He's after the corpse of Big Boss. Huh? What for? It's the final key he needs to gain access to SOP. The keys to the system are Big Boss's genetic code and biometric data. Without them, there's no way to gain access. Wait, what's Liquid been doing all this time? He's been performing tests. Two tests. The first, using the genetic code from Liquid's DNA chip. In his second attempt, he used the DNA code and biometric data extracted from Snake's blood. What's the need for the original if a substitute works just as well? Neither your genetic pattern, nor Liquid's genetic pattern, is a 100% match for Big Bosses. <coughs> Liquid, 
What do you mean we don't match? <laughs> Dr. Emmerich. Hmm? Scientifically speaking, there's the markers implanted during the cloning process. The mixing of mitochondrial DNA within the egg cell. <coughs> we intentionally altered <coughs> terminate. Terminator genes, scientifically speaking. Both you and Liquid are as similar to Big Boss as you could possibly be, but you're still different. Different? Yes. So that's what Liquid was talking about. We're not copies of our father, after all. Which is why they created Solidus. But Solidus is dead. Listen carefully, Snake. This is the most important part. The AI that controls the system employs a highly aggressive, advanced IDS. It uses a special code to inspect all data and commands circulating within the network. Any data that fails to conform to that code is treated as a foreign object and expunged, like viruses killed by white blood cells. The authentication program this IDS uses is based on a genetic identification program, one I helped develop for FoxDie. It's set up so that host commands only execute properly if the key matches perfectly. However, if the IDS suspects someone is trying to break into the system, it registers that genetic code on a blacklist. That code is then blocked and can never again be used to access the system. So, if you're going to use a substitute, you need to find a new genetic access code with each new trial. So when Liquid accessed the system in the Middle East and South America, it was only a test. I can't believe this. Snake and Big Boss don't have the same genetic code? Strictly speaking, Snake and Liquid aren't the same either. Which is why Fox Die only affected Liquid at Shadow Moses. And spared you. Let's put it this way. If Liquid uses Big Boss's genetic code, the original, they'll have the system completely under his control. Hold on. I thought having his code wasn't enough. You need his biometric data at the same time, don't you? That's right. And Big Boss is already dead. No. He's alive. Big Boss is... alive. His body is. Or rather, his cells. That's impossible! Big Boss survives as a biomort. A brain-dead shell sustained in the lab. Liquid has already left for Europe in search of Big Boss's body. Right from the start, he knew his experiment in South America wasn't going to work. Europe, huh? The test was a failure, even with his code. As I feared, it's not pure enough. We need all of him. Our only remaining option is to secure the original. If Liquid obtains the body, He'll be primed to make his final move. Hmm. Allowing him total control of the system. Exactly. Unless we can stop him first.
Security. The Patriots. I can't believe this sort of thing it still goes on. <sighs> the war economy is heating up the R&D race. No. <clears throat> it's not just the PMCs either. Every corporation tethered to the military industrial complex is losing its sense of morality. And it's us science holics who are doing their dirty work for them, not even realizing it. Can we make Jack better? I don't know. Sunny. May I? No use. There's nothing we can do here. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Look at this. His artificial blood needs dialysis. We don't have the proper equipment. Dialysis? Getting his wounds healed is important, too. But at this rate, he's not gonna last that long. Dialysis. Is that like what kidneys do? That's right. Raiden's blood is an older type of artificial blood that was used by the military, called white blood. After it's been in use for a while, the blood needs to be dialyzed. Filtered. Right now, he's slipping into autotoxemia. Madnar. I've heard of him. A world-renowned cybernetics expert. Strictly underground, though. We're in luck, then. It's settled. We must head for Europe. The sooner we get there, the oh, better. Uh, yeah. I'll call Campbell and have him get us landing clearance. Snake, where are you going? Well, I'm gonna be spewing out poison soon enough anyway. What's one more smoker? Uh-uh. Oh. This is a no-smoking flight.
Who is this? Oh, her? That's my sister. Really? I never knew you had a sister. For a moment, I thought she might have been your girlfriend. No, I... I don't have a... Emma was a brilliant programmer. She wrote the worm that destroyed the Arsenal Gear AI. Then... Vamp killed her. I'm so sorry. No! There's nothing for you to be sorry for. Or me. <laughs> I used to be an anime otaku. Oh. So, that's where Otacon comes from. I was always fascinated by sci-fi anime. That's what got me into this line of work. It's too bad reality wasn't so simple. I never even imagined that science, that my own research, could cause so much misery. I mean... It's not like a science holics or Satanists or anything. But even when we've got the best of intentions, we end up being used by others for evil. Uh, oh, Dr. Emmerich, I. Uh, you see this? Sonny helped me build it. <laughs> really? Sonny helped build this? We built it using top-secret docs and patents dug up from intranets at a bunch of research labs. To tell you the truth, I think she's better at it than I am. But she's just a child. She cracked the protection on your mail. Well, I um, assumed it was you. <laughs> Sunny was taken by the Patriots right after she was born. She never even met her parents. She spent her entire childhood inside the net. That's why she has trouble speaking. Her home is in the computer. She can only see the outside from the inside. She's always in there, searching for herself, searching for her family. She's trying to find out who she is and where she's going. Searching for herself and her family. She believes she can find the answers inside a machine hooked up to the world. She spends every day inside the net exploring. For Sunny, this is home. No, it shouldn't be like that. What? It's time you let her go outside. What are you talking about? She hasn't even been born yet. She's still in the womb. She needs to live a real life. But... Sonny's never shown any interest in leaving the Nomad. Frankly, I'm worried about letting her go out there. I have a feeling she'll do just fine. You really think she'll be okay going outside? That's not what I meant. I think she's got a good handle on her science. Ah. Uh, uh, sorry. Go on. Huh? You were about to say something. Oh. Uh, right. Um, would you mind if I helped Sunny with her cooking? Oh, of course not. Go ahead. <laughs> but, uh, about all we've got on board besides military rations are eggs. No. Leave them off. It makes you look handsome. You think so? Yeah, uh, 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 uh. 
Um, Dr. Emmerich. Huh? Is it okay to sleep in there? Uh, excuse me? Well, Dr. Emmerich, um, I, I know it's easy to forget sometimes, but oh, I, I am a woman. <laughs> you understand. <laughs> Sorry. I, I know it's selfish of me, but... I'd like to be alone for a while. Right. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> uh, I'll show you in. Thank you. Good night, Dr. Emmerich. Yeah. Uh, if you get uncomfortable or anything, just let me know. Uh, I'll be out there working. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Uh, and, uh... Yes? Uh, call me Hal. Good night. Good night, Hal. state of emergency has been declared in an effort to root out the local resistance. The hunt is being carried out by U.S.-based PMC, Raven Sword, one of the companies under Outer Heaven's control. Which means that liquid's lurking somewhere behind the scenes. Right. And at the top of the target list is the Paradise Lost Army, the resistance group led by Big Mama. Snake. You'll be infiltrating the region where they are believed to house their base of operations. It looks as if the PMCs moved swiftly, cutting off Big Mama and Company's escape routes. They should still be hiding somewhere in that area. Big Boss's corpse is bound to be with them. You've been added to the PMC's blacklist, so you're going to have to lie about your identity to get in. I've provided you with a way to evade the checkpoints. There you are. Make contact with the Resistance and find Big Mama. This is our last chance. We must reach Big Boss's body before they do.
Next. 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 Said next. You. Get your ass in the machine. Hey, are you deaf? Take him away. Take him from here. But we've been looking for this man. Yes, ma'am. Come with me. Next. You're looking younger. What's your secret? Face camo. A little present from tentacles. Huh. The PMCs sure seem to know you well enough. You may not believe it, but I'm in charge of overseeing all PMC activity. Having connections can still open doors. You alone? Listen to me, Snake. After reporting what happened in the Middle East to my superiors, I wrote up a threat assessment. The President's finally realized the danger Liquid's little rebellion poses and has called for immediate action. Now I've got more bodies than I know what to do with. A whole joint Army Marines team. They're already on site, mixed in with the U.S. forces here. We're ready to strike Liquid at any time. You're planning to take him by force. It's crazy. Look, things aren't that simple. <sighs> Listen, old man. I don't take orders from you or from your Colonel Campbell. <sighs> it's gonna be the Middle East all over again. No, it won't. If things get out of hand, we can put a total lockdown on the PMC's weapons. They won't be able to fight back. Don't forget, we control the system. I wouldn't rely too much on the system if I were you. We've got them beat in sheer numbers. Meryl! Look, Snake. Just leave this to me. There's no need for you to put yourself in harm's way. Don't risk your life for no reason. <sighs> Snake. What you're trying to do, it's not a mission. I know. It's not justice. It's a hired hit. If you know, then... <coughs> Look, our ways of thinking might be different. But to me, you're still a legend, a hero. 
I know all about the things you did when you were young. It was what kept me going. I can't bear to watch you die over something so pointless. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Old soldiers never die. <laughs> Your cause is our cause now. You don't have to do this. I'm no hero. Never was. I'm just an old killer. Hired to do some wet work. Senile to face the truth. Wake up and face reality, old snake. And stay out of our way. Otacon, they've seen this face too. Yeah, it might have been added to the PMC's blacklist as well. And Merrill was acting kind of strange. Things are going to get hairy once the American suppression troops get here. We'd better get to Big Boss's corpse, and fast. But first, we've got to find Big Mama. Snake, let's go over what we know so far. The streets are under curfew. The only people you'll find out there now are PMC soldiers and members of the Resistance. Yeah, I thought it looked a little too quiet to be a tourist attraction. The Resistance members are scheduled to convene at Big Mama's hideout. So our best course of action is to follow their lead. When you find the Resistance, tail them. Let them lead you to Big Mama. But how exactly am I supposed to find this Resistance? The PMCs have laid a dragnet for Resistance members that covers the entire town. They're using SOP to notify each other by radio of any info collected during their searches. By intercepting those signals, you should be able to reach the Resistance members' locations in real time. Intercept their communications? How do I do that? I've provided you with a new device for just that purpose. To hijack PMC communications, open the item window and select the Signal Interceptor. The Interceptor constantly monitors PMC voice and data transmissions. When you've got the Signal Interceptor equipped and you hear the PMC's chatter about the Resistance, check your map. It should display the location. Got it. Oh, and Snake, I think we've found a way to treat Raiden. Really? Yeah, we got in touch with Dr. Madnar. Naomi and Sonny are on their way now. They'll be all right on their own? They're a few clicks north of where you are now. It's a non-combat zone, so there won't be any checkpoints. There's even a dialysis machine. It'll take some time, but I think he'll be okay. Good. Anyway, you need to hurry and make contact with Big Mama. I got it. If Liquid gets his hands on that corpse, it's all over. Follow the Resistance's lead.
Okay. First thing is to look for the resistance. Either use your radar to pick up their trail, or intercept the PMC's radio communications to learn where resistance members are most likely to be. resistance member. Now tail them without letting them know you're there. Snake, the location of a resistance member has been forwarded to your map. Check it out.
searchlight. Find something nearby to hide behind. Stay out of the light. about that PMC trooper. Do you hear whistling?
Looks like they're conducting vehicle patrols. Watch out for them, Snake. CQC, Snake. No doubt about it, he is the legendary soldier. Call me Mama. Big Mama. I need 
to talk to you. Raiden sent me. My, how you've grown. David. It was you, not I, who was created from the rib of man. But I gave you life. I am your mother. What? Les enfants terribles. You can't grow a human being in a test tube. Not even a clone. You need a woman's body to give it life. You mean... a surrogate mother? That's an awfully cold way to put it. I am your mother. I gave birth... for the Patriots. Gave... birth? The forbidden fruit. Appropriate. No? Follow me. I'll explain everything. The man who wants me dead is Liquid, your twin. You think you know him, but I know him better. He was once Ocelot, but Liquid has taken control of his soul. And now he's locked in a bitter struggle with Zero. Zero? The founder of the Patriots. Founder? When did this happen? Forty years ago. During the Cold War, when the United States and the Soviet Union were still at odds. It was in that chaotic era that the Patriots were born. And I played my part. I was one of the founding members. You? Zero created the Patriots to manage and control the American state. That control endured long after the Cold War ended. The organization became an empty shell, continuing to function through AIs. Those AIs are responsible for the creation of the war economy, and they gave rise to the Sons of the Patriot system. But I am partly to blame. I bear some of the guilt for creating the organization. It was right after I first met your father. Big Boss. Back in 1964, I was ordered to take part in a CIA op called Operation Snake Eater, which concerned a new weapon the Soviets were developing at the time. My mission was to support a certain agent. That agent later became Big Boss, but I knew him as Snake. Snake? Yes, Naked Snake. That was his code name at the time. A name he would give to you, his son. The commander of this mission was a man called Zero, the head of Special Forces Unit Fox. Back then, I was working as a double agent for the Chinese. My objective was to secure the location of the Philosopher's Legacy, a massive cache of hidden wealth, and report it to Beijing. I was to acquire a microfilm showing the location of secret funds, funds amassed by the Allied powers during World War II. But I failed in my mission and was expelled from China. I took the apple from the snake and was cast out of Eden. After years on the run, I ended up in Hanoi. That's where I met him again. It was around then that Zero used the massive funds contained in the Philosopher's Legacy to start a new organization, the Patriots, which would carry out the final wishes of a certain legendary hero. The initial membership consisted of Big Boss, Sigan, paramedic, and their commander, Zero. Oh, and there was one more who we mustn't forget. 
He stayed behind in the Soviet Union to support the group as an informant, Ocelot, who is now liquid. After your father rescued me in Hanoi, I went to America and joined their organization. Zero's goal was to achieve a unity of thought and awareness. He believed that was what the boss wanted, and the rest of the Patriots followed his lead. The boss? The boss was a legendary hero from the Second World War, known as the Mother of Special Forces. She had an almost overwhelming charisma about her. The CIA feared this, so they had her eliminated. If she had survived, the world of the 21st century might have been a very different place. We were all influenced by the boss's will. It was what drove us to create this organization, to be closer to that spirit. Zero decided that in order to lead the people, we needed a special kind of icon. So he turned to Big Boss, the last son of the boss. He shared more of her life than anyone else. It was Big Boss, the true heir to her legacy, who was best suited to play this role. Zero elevated Big Boss, the hero who saved the world, to the status of an idol. The truth behind Big Boss became riddled with exaggeration, misrepresentation, and outright lies. Zero disseminated these stories among the masses and gathered the rich and powerful to his banner. Every era needs its symbols to control the people. Whether it be the stars and stripes, or the hammer and sickle. As the times and currents of politics changed, so too did Zero. Eventually, he became a prisoner of his own lust for power, sparking friction between him and Big Boss, who resented playing the puppet. With Big Boss drifting away, Zero realized he would need insurance. Something that would perpetuate the existence of Big Boss, their organization's icon. And so Zero secretly embarked on a new project. Les Enfants Terribles. Its goal was to create a clone of Big Boss, the ultimate soldier. The project was led by Dr. Clark, known at the time as Paramedic. After dozens of failures, they finally, miraculously, succeeded in producing a fertilized egg. The egg used in the successful in vitro fertilization came from Dr. Clark's assistant, a healthy Japanese woman. Blood from the east flows within your veins. Give birth to Big Boss. To realize this, I asked to serve as the surrogate mother and was more than happy to carry you in my womb. I loved him. Nine months later, I gave birth to two big bosses, you and Liquid. It didn't matter that you were clones or that they had manipulated your DNA. You were born the same way as any other normal child, from your mother's womb. But Les Enfants Terribles proved to be the final straw for Zero and Big Boss. Determined to oppose Zero and his plans, Big Boss broke away from the Patriots. He left the States, created his own mercenary company, and drifted around the world. I'm sorry. Your father never wanted you. Human life isn't meant to be manipulated like that. I knew that, but I wanted you. After Big Boss left, Zero really lost control. What Zero wanted was an orderly world, one governed by rules. His fortune grew through countless wars, and his words influenced decision-making all the way up to the Oval Office. As the world saw the rise of digital technology, IT, the internet, and genetics, the Patriots' power grew immense. Their roots spread and took hold throughout the globe. In time, they began to dictate the fate of entire nations from the shadows. And before we knew it, the Patriots, the proud police of the world, started bringing an entire planet 
under their control. Their intentions were fair, but their execution was flawed. Zero developed weapons, amassed armies, used information for extortion, all in order to gain more wealth. He was obsessed with controlling awareness on the inside from the outside. But I cannot imagine that's what the boss would have wanted. They both misinterpreted her will. And their absolute reverence for her drove them apart. So began the war between Zero and Big Boss. Opposing interpretations, each striving to realize the boss's will. Everything you see today stems from their Cold War. <laughs> Differences in race, in religion, in ideology. This war they've caused is no different from any other human error in history. It all started with a tiny fork in the path. And grew into a great rift. There was nothing left of the boss's noble will in their struggle. All that remained was hatred, a passion to destroy one another. Big Boss returned to the US with a plan in mind and once again assumed command of Foxhound. In Outer Heaven, and then Zanzibar Land, Big Boss plotted coup d'etat against Zero. But you, Solid Snake, his own clone, foiled his efforts both times. Big Boss and Gray Fox, Frank Yeager, were left near death. Zero recovered their bodies. Frank Yeager's entire body was reconstructed through surgery and he was reborn as the cyborg ninja. Big Boss, now a vegetable, became a prisoner of Zero even in death. For Zero, more than anyone else, your father was an irreplaceable icon. No, the truth is, for Zero, he was an irreplaceable friend. After Big Boss's betrayal, Zero could no longer believe in something so uncertain as life. He lost his belief in everything. Nations, organizations, individuals. Zero was no longer willing to place his organization in the hands of the next generation. Instead, he set up a network of AIs, a decision-making system formed from all the information he had accumulated. He built four AIs, GW, TJ, AL, and TR, as sort of a digital Mount Rushmore, and one core artificial intelligence to unite them, John Doe. GW? The same GW we destroyed five years ago? The same. Ever since GW was cut off, JD and the other three AIs have controlled all information on every aspect of global society. Economics, politics, law, morals, and culture. The war economy is no exception. In the shadow of the system and its complete control over the world, Big Boss isn't allowed to live or die. He's trapped for eternity in a brain-dead prison. To bind himself to his friend, to ensure his rule over the world, Zero transformed Big Boss into an icon, neither living nor dead. Sounds almost like a religion. Naturally. Ocelot and I planned to free him from Zero's prison. We enlisted Naomi Hunter, an authority in the field of nanomachine research, into our organization. And we used Frank Yeager to kill Dr. Clark. Ocelot tortured the DARPA chief, Donald Anderson, also known as Sigmund, to death, and made it look like an accident. The Shadow Moses incident. 
with paramedic and Sigint dead. Zero was the only one left. But we too paid a price. I lost Ocelot. Ocelot wasn't fighting for the Pentagon or the Russians, and certainly not for Zero. He was fighting for Big Boss. He idolized him. When Ocelot grafted Liquid's right arm to his own, his body was taken over by Liquid's thoughts and spirit. He may be Ocelot in physical form, but his mind is Liquid's. I was the last one. And then, someone appeared to help me. Raiden. It was when I met him that I finally discovered the location of Big Boss. It was in the data he obtained from GW. Together, he and I retrieved Big Boss. But Big Boss was still asleep, as Zero had left him. Why did Zero keep him alive? People need heroes. Zero wanted to create a messiah. A legend that would never die. Liquid is after Big Boss's body. Is it here? I'll take you to meet him. This is his Pix, his holy ark. His body is alive, but his consciousness is locked away by nanomachines. So technically speaking, he's not really brain dead. We can't allow Liquid to inherit the same sins that corrupted Zero. Manipulating people's minds for the sake of his own ego. What happened? She's gone. She's not in the Nomad anymore. When? Less than an hour ago. She disappeared right after she and Sonny got back from Dr. Madnar's place. Why weren't you watching her? I... Uh, I didn't have my glasses on. Naomi said it herself. The experiment can't succeed without her. You think she went back to Liquid? <sighs> what about Raiden? Good news on that front. We managed to get our hands on a dialysis machine and set up an ICU. We just started him on dialysis and treatment for his wounds. Will he live? Yeah, no worries there. Sonny's taken over for Naomi. But his treatment's probably gonna take 48 hours. Until then, Raiden can't move. Hey you! Come here! Is that move?
Snake. The PMCs are converging on your location. Damn it! They're sending in Gecko. They'll be on you in less than five minutes. Are they ready? Yes, ma'am. We'll escape through the canal route using the real van. Get it ready. Hurry. Yes, ma'am. Snake, over here. We've got decoy vans set to draw some of our pursuers away. All of these children were orphans. They work in arms factories. And when they grow up, they want to join a PMC. They seek revenge on other companies, PMCs that killed their parents, and use their earnings to support their younger siblings. There are countless child soldiers like these in the PMCs. Nowadays, anyone with a computer can get combat training. The FPS games that these children love are distributed for free by these companies. Of course, it's all just virtual training. It's so easy for them to get absorbed by these war games. And before they know it, they're in the PMCs holding real guns. These kids end up fighting in proxy wars that have nothing to do with their own lives. They think it's cool to fight like this. They think that combat is life. They don't need a reason to fight. After all, for them, it's only a game. Zero is the cause of all this. Defeating Liquid won't change things. Unless we stop the Patriot system, the cycle will go unbroken. Hop on. Hold on to me. With so many wars being waged, oil and biofuel have become as precious as diamonds. It's been a while since I went out for a ride. Are you sure about this? <laughs> I only get off my bike when I fall in love. Or fall dead. Big Mama. <laughs> Call me Eva. Boss's body out of enemy hands, no matter what. Get the body safely to the canal escape point.
Big Mama. Come on. Stay with me. Eva, I need you. Oh, is that you? Mother's work is never done. My mama! Where's the van? Over there. The children. She'll be coming to search the van. I'll take care of it. You stay here. Keep watch. I'll contact the children. Here. Take this. Snake. Come back in one piece. I will. Uh, promise me.
building up inside! Eat away at me! Come out of her suit! Watch out! She's gonna try to grab you! Come <laughs> on. 
Way to bring that bird down, Snake. Drebin. And you got yourself a souvenir, too. A grenade launcher. Nice. That's a real user-friendly weapon. Not much use to me without an ID, though. I laundered this one free of charge. What's the catch? Only that you give it to me when you're done with it. A weapon with that many decades of rage stored up inside it? Now that's a collector's item. How old was she? I'd say about 20. But she had years of soldier's rage hidden away in that youthful body of hers. Soldiers? Yeah, the soldiers of Ake. A place that hasn't seen peace in a long, long time. She was captured by one side or another, and kept caged up like an animal, along with God knows how many other kids. Anonymous violence. Exactly. It's unknown whether her captors were with the government or the rebels. In any case, they got their kicks by abusing these helpless little kids day after day after day. That constant barrage, that battlefield rage slowly built up inside their bodies, their minds. The kids tried to keep each other's spirits up, always clinging to the hope that someone would come to their rescue, barely surviving off of scraps of food. But those soldiers didn't stop. They called the kids parasites and shit-eating ravens. Beat them even harder. Then one morning, the soldiers just up and left, leaving the surviving kids to be eaten alive by the birds. Almost like one of those sky burials. One by one, their bodies were picked apart by ravens' beaks. Until finally, the flock came for her. But by some miracle, their beaks cut her bonds instead. And like that, she was liberated. But in that instant, she was filled with an uncontrollable rage, and it smothered her soul. She ripped the ravens pecking at her to pieces, and then went after the soldiers. And when she finally caught up with them, she waited until nightfall like a hunter awaiting its prey. They say that when a raven cries, a man dies. And that's exactly what happened that night. Screeching and cawing, she killed every last living being in the camp. Both the soldiers and the civilians they'd enslaved. In her eyes, there was no longer a difference. The cruelty her friends had suffered. The pain and humiliation she'd endured. Hers was the distillation of the rage that decades of war had imparted on those soldiers. Mm. It was her strength. And her greatest weakness. You're something else, Snake. You managed to cleanse Raven of her rage. No, seriously. You're the seed of war. In fact, I'd say you might even be war itself. Draven. Maybe it's still too early to tell. You still got half the B&B core ahead of you. Keep your eye on the ball, pal. Vans that came out with us. Her decoys. Uh, uh, the real one is floating down the river, headed downstream. I managed to get in touch with the children. The Pix is safe. We're going to rendezvous on the riverbank downstream. Land and air routes are cut off. Oh, but there's a cruiser waiting for us. The Volta River is our only chance of escape. Oh, let's get out of here. Hurry. Good thinking. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Follow me. 
don't need to feel the wind anymore. There's no need to keep lying to myself. I only get off my bike when I fall in love. Or... Oh... oh. Snake... Give me a hand. Yeah. Uh. Uh, the underground aqueduct leads to the river. There should be fewer of them down there. Liquid. Not bad. Where's the pigs? <laughs> that no longer matters. Where is it? Everything. And now, thanks to her, I finally have it. The thing I've sought for so long. Big Boss. Put down the gun, Snake. It's already too late. You almost did it. But it looks like I win after all. One last smoke. Huh. You think you're a big boss now? <coughs> oh. Guilty as charged. But all that ends today. to seek you see I've got the upper hand uh, even if you do get a hold of the system you'll only have one part of the Patriots AI uh, the military part uh, 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 oh. 
What of it, brother? It's only a matter of time before I have everything. <laughs> Remember, GW? The AI they think they lost? It's mine. A part of my army. Impossible. We destroyed it. Your worm only managed to cut GW into little pieces. Pieces we were able to reconstruct. And then we stowed it away inside JD's network. This man's body has served me well, allowing me to pass every security barrier between me and GW. After all, the Patriot system is nothing more than a machine. Now that GW is a spook inside the network, there's no way JD would recognize it as an external threat. Once I destroy JD with a nuclear strike, the Patriots network will be mine. And then, I'll build my haven, free from all forms of control. I'll cast aside my old identity and take my own name for the first time. Created by the Patriots. We're not men. We're shadows in the shape of men. We're freaks who never should have existed. We're a sister. Insurance that future generations never prosper. The Patriots saw fit to create us, and in doing so became our only raison d'etre. I won't fight my fate any longer. I'll kill Zero and Big Boss, and become a patriot myself. It all began with Zero and Big Boss. Our purpose in life is to fulfill our destinies. And once all is returned to Zero, the world can be reborn. As we both live, the world will not know an age of light. If we're to pass the baton to the next generation, the only choice left to us is death. Boss. Good. The players have all assembled, Snake. The time has come for you to witness. Witness our moment of triumph.
Drop your weapons and put your hands up! is mine! Your guns and your weapons are no longer your own. Behold! Guns of the people!
them have it. We don't need it Give up on me. If 
It's all right. Call me Johnny. are no different. Scorched shadows born to the world. When a beast steps into the light, uh, uh, unless the light is put out, the shadow cannot be erased. So long as there is light, there is shadow. To return everything to normal, the light must be extinguished. And when that happens, you will be too... Like I said, we pride ourselves on service. Come on, let's take this guy to his friends. 